Today we have the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, and I've gotta say, even though it's still an old school type of vehicle, it really never gets old to me. Toyota has made a few small updates throughout the years, and I'm gonna talk about things on this 2021 model and on the upcoming 2022 TRD Pro as well, but we're gonna take a full detailed look at the outside, the inside, get it out on the road, go for a test drive. Let's check it out. Now real quick before we get started, my name is Nolan, I do full videos like this and a variety of videos every single week. So if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe down below. But if you want to see more about the 4Runner, I've got a couple other 4Runner videos in the description below, including a decent amount of off-roading if you want to see that. Now let's take a look at all of these exterior details and even though the design is the same, we still have body on frame construction, but there's a few different tweaks over the last couple of years and 2022 even gives you a new TRD Sport model, so I'm excited to see how that handles. One of the changes over the last couple of years is the addition of LED headlights. So our TRD Pro has both LED high and low beams, a projector and a reflector housing. The lower trims are going to give you uh, LED low beams, but not high beams. But I believe that next year for 2022, all models will have LED high and low beams standard. Plus, you've got those LED fog lights, which are rigid industries fog lights for the best possible performance. And of course, with TRD fashion, you've got that scoop on the hood and then the TRD skid plate below. And I do have a night video showing off these headlights so you can see just how well they do in comparison to old models and see if they satisfy you. Now the paint color for this 2021 TRD Pro is called Lunar Rock. It's a really interesting paint. It's kind of grayish, greenish. It's very interesting and I've actually had a couple people ask me what color it is and say that they actually like it. But for 2022 you're going to get what's called Lime Rush, a very vibrant color that I'll show you here on the screen. Let me know what you think of that. And with our TRD Pro, of course, we get specific TRD Pro wheels and some all-terrain tires. These are 17-inch wheels, so you've got a good amount of tire on here instead of massive wheels like you see on so many vehicles. Dimensionally, the 4Runner is about 191 inches long, so it's nowhere near as big as the Toyota Sequoia or not even as long as the Toyota Highlander, so that can bode well for getting in and out of certain situations off-road. Plus, you can tell it's got good ground clearance. We got about 9.6 inches of ground clearance. And Toyota gives you TRD tuned front springs, plus you've got the Fox high performance shocks. So this can give you the most capable off-road ability of all the four runners. Another tradition with the TRD Pros is the roof basket. We've got this black roof basket up above. Can carry a lot of stuff on there. And then in the back, you've got LED tail lights, but you've got an incandescent regular bulb turn signal. And then there's a cool feature back here that Toyota retained, the roll down window, which I'll show you later. And then you've got a spare tire mounted underneath. Now coming to the rear of the 4Runner, there's a couple of cool features here. So first of all, you have these arrows. One says lock, one says unlock. Right now it's locked. I'm gonna press and hold that. I can unlock it, and if you hold it, it's gonna roll down this window. This is awesome, not only to drive with, but to have easy access back here. Or maybe if you got your pet back here, your fur babies, they can have the window down and have free access. I like that more than a flip up glass. But also, you can press this to not only lock the vehicle, but press and hold it to roll that back up. And there's a switch on the inside you can roll it up and down from too. But there's no power lift gate, no hands free lift gate, nothing like that. There's a little touch pad here. Doesn't take a lot of effort to lift it up. You've got a couple of grab handles there. There's even a strap because it's not an adjustable lift gate. But another thing, we have a light on both sides. There's a light here and a light there, which not only can be good for lighting up your cargo area, but for lighting up areas back here if you're using the 4Runner for camping, especially if you have this optional sliding tray. This is an optional feature. You can have 400 pounds on there, but let's say it's at night you're camping, maybe you're eating or tailgating or something you have this pulled out you got some light up there no problems so that's really cool and this can slide in and out just like that that's not all back here so also another thing is you've got a couple of speakers back here for this JBL sound system there's one on each side by the light and of course just like other vehicles you've got tie downs right here you've got a little hook for a cargo net or grocery bags on both sides you even get this three-prong outlet that's nice, especially if you're camping or tailgating. And then a 12 volt power outlet right there. Plus there's a little storage cubby on each side because some 4Runners can give you a third row, but not our TRD Pro. 
Then overall behind the second row, you get about 46 cubic feet. It is a big boxy vehicle, so you can shove a lot of stuff up to the roof. And not only do you have folding seats, you have a 20 or a 40, 20, 40 split. So you can have a middle folded section and have some long items. But these are kind of interesting. So the headrests will be up. You have a little lever to fold them down. And then you don't just start folding the seat down. You actually pull out the seat bottom. So that folds out like that. And this is nice because when you fold this down, it is super flat coming across. You also have a little tiny storage area right up under there. So a little underfloor storage, which is good. And then when you fold the other side down, you're gonna get about 86 or 88 cubic feet actually. So that's great, almost 89 cubic feet of really flat space. Now, believe it or not, Toyota actually gives you the smart key with push button start on this 4Runner. And that means you get the sensors on the door. So you've got a few little lines to lock it. It'll beep for you. And then you've got a sensor in the back to unlock it. And it actually has remote start. You press the lock button three times and then you have to hold it the third time. And it takes a while to get remote start, even though it doesn't show on the key fob. But there's one cool one thing that I don't like that's not cool. So it's running. As soon as I open the door, it shuts off. So kind of annoying, kind of a waste of your AC or heat running. But that's all Toyotas that do that. Then a quick look at the front seats. If you like to rest your arm up here on the door, this is nice and soft. You've got a nice soft padded armrest here and a good grab handle with a rubber liner in there as well. Good storage overall. But let's look at the seats. So the TRD Pro is going to give you these TRD headrests and these are synthetic soft tex seats so it's not real leather but it does feel like a durable leather these are comfortable you've got decent bolstering on the side you've got good bolstering down here and i like how these seats don't have perforations in them and neither do the back seats so then you don't get dirt and crumbs and crud inside of them and they're eight-way power adjustable so you've got your basic forward and backwards tilt height adjustment and two-way lumbar support the seats are heated on this TRD Pro, but if you want ventilated seats, you'd have to go with the limited trim 4Runner. And space in here is okay. It's not gonna be quite as great as some big SUVs, but I love the way that it feels in here. I mean, you can sit up tall, you've got good ride height. The steering wheel is manual tilt and telescoping. Doesn't have a huge range of motion, but I've been able to get it right where I want it. And I love the good ride height. You've just got a great view of the road and it just feels utilitarian in here. Now let's take a quick look at the second row. And some people hate on the 4Runner second row because it's not quite as big as some, but it's plenty spacious and I'll show you. You even get nice material up here and right here and a good grab handle plus all the little storage and bottle holders. You still get the Softex seats back here and in this TRD Pro, there's no heated seats back here. Now I'm five foot nine and sitting behind myself, I've got good knee space and good foot space. There's not a huge hump in the middle and you still get air conditioning vents and a couple of fast charging USB ports. For comfort, there's also a center folding armrest with a couple of bottle holders. You can take the inserts out and fit larger bottles in here as well. And I can still sit up tall because of this boxy shape and have good headroom overall. So the back seat is still just fine. Now as we hop inside of the 4Runner, things stay pretty darn similar. It's very utilitarian. You got a new screen as of the last couple of years, but otherwise it's still utilitarian, easy to live with and easy to function. I'm gonna kind of quickly go through all of this, but you've got push button start right there. And I like the sound of the 4Runner when it starts up. Even though it's still just a V6, you've got this leather wrapped steering wheel here four spoke design, I like the big opening in the middle. And then you still have the old Toyota cruise control stock down here, which I actually kind of like too. It just frees up space on the steering wheel. Now this might just be me, but I think on the TRD Pro or off-road models, automatic rain, rain sensing wipers would be nice because there's been some instances where you're off-roading and you don't have your wipers ready and you get a big splash on the window and then you gotta quickly turn the wipers on. Very small, but it'd be kind of nice to have on here. And then, Toyota gives you this really small display in the middle. It gives you quite a, bit, quite a bit of information in terms of trip computer stuff. You've got tire pressure on there, and then you can even see the angle that your steering or that your tires are. That can be really helpful for off-roading. Then you got your compass on here. You can see some audio on there and some driver assistance features and even a little bit of customization with that. But 
Uh, don't expect anything fancy, no big displays on any of the Forerunners because you got physical gauges on the left and right. Then moving across, Toyota still has their clock that you used to see in some of the older Forerunners or some of the older Toyotas like that. This is an eight inch screen. This is standard on all of them. And uh, it's a touch screen, but you still have physical buttons over here. So I'm really glad to see that you get physical buttons on both sides. And then you've got a volume knob, a tuning knob. You've still got physical controls, big knobs and buttons down here for your dual zone climate control. And I'm kind of surprised to see dual zone, but I really like having dual zone in here. It should be at this price. So you've got automatic, they can control their own temperature, all of that. And I love the big buttons and knobs as well. And then back up here, we have the JBL audio system on here. It's a 15 speaker system with subs, and it sounds pretty good, at least for the Forerunner. Now here's one thing that will change for 2022. So we just have a basic backup camera. There's no dynamic lines, it's just your basic camera with grid lines. But the 2022 limited model is gonna give you the panoramic view monitor, like a 360 camera. And the 2022 TRD Pro is gonna get the multi-terrain monitor from the Tacoma, which is pretty much like another 360 degree camera. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on here standard. It works just fine and takes up the entire screen. And then moving down, you've got a USB port, a 12 volt power outlet, the same typical little storage bin here, little storage bin there. You've got one cup holder here, and both of these cup holders have these removable inserts, the rubber. These are honestly kind of annoying to me, but you can fit smaller drinks and take it out for larger drinks for both of these. But for example, a, a bottle my size, it just pulls this whole thing out, which can be kind of annoying. You can twist it on that one, but on that one, you're just kind of screwed. It's gonna to stick to it if it's too big. You actually have a lever for your four wheel drive controls. I kind of like that. So you have that traditional feeling of shifting into four wheel drive. Toyota still gives you the gated shifter. There's a little storage area right there. And then back here, Toyota gives you your window switch to roll down the rear window and heated seats. The center armrest is padded and it's good size in terms of its width. Then looking down in here, there's nothing special in here. You've got a lot of space overall, a coin holder, but no plugs or lights. And then over here, Toyota gives you a locking glove box. Toyota gives you an automatic dimming rear view mirror, and I love that it's not a frameless mirror because the entire mirror is automatic dimming instead of just a small portion of it. And overhead is where things start to get fun. So first of all, you've got garage controls up here. You've got your interior lights, and then you've got active traction control. You can turn traction control on or off, but you have Toyota's active traction control, A-Track, for off-roading, a locking rear differential, just push that button on the go, and then down here, check this out. We have our multi-terrain select. Now with the multi-terrain select on the right, you just turn it on and then you can change between all of these, which I'll show you. You have to be in four wheel drive, but check it out. We're in mud, sand, and dirt. Then you got loose rock, mogul, rock, and then you, want, you would wanna shift into four low and it's telling you to do that. And then you've got Toyota's crawl control, which works great. I've been able to use this. You can turn it on and then you can choose your speed going up grades in four low to where you just have to focus on steering and not controlling the speed. It'll maintain a slow speed for you to climb up some rocky hills. Then overhead, Toyota gives you a regular size moonroof on the upper trims. And like I said, one of my favorite things is that roll down window and visibility out of the Forerunner is really good, especially if you have these second rows down because it's so big, upright, and boxy. That visibility is just great. Now let's take a look at the Forerunner under the hood and for 2021 and 2022, nothing changes. Obviously with the next generation, something's probably gonna change, but I still like what Toyota gives us in here. It's a tried and true, reliable V6. It's Toyota's port injected, four liter V6 with 280 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque paired with their old school five-speed automatic. That five-speed automatic is definitely uh, not ideal for highway driving, but it is still very smooth and a reliable transmission. So something to keep in mind. Plus, this is port injected. No direct injection like so many of the new cars with their carbon buildup. And four-wheel drive is obviously standard on this TRD Pro. It's a part-time four-wheel drive. Full-time four-wheel drive is on the limited trim, so you don't even have to really worry about shifting in and out of four-wheel drive if that's what you want. Towing with this is at 5,000 pounds, so it's literally the same as the Toyota Highlander. 
it's not bad but i wish it could be a little bit better maybe in the next generation and then miles per gallon is the achilles heel of this forerunner by far 16 miles per gallon city 19 miles per gallon highway that's pretty bad this forerunner actually has a little buzz coming out of this exhaust let's take a listen y'all let's get going on the test drive in this 2021 forerunner trd pro now in this drive i'm going to talk about some of the daily driving aspects of it like ride comfort acceleration and things like that and give you my thoughts about it because i've driven this uh, trd pro a couple of times i've driven an sr5 before and they both drive better than what i think people give them credit for now here's the deal it's not going to be something that handles like a crossover you know a car like type handling it's not going to have the ride comfort of one of those either because it's a body on frame vehicle it's basically a truck in this body and this four cylinder or excuse me four liter six cylinder is not as peppy as a v8 or a turbo it's you, you can't have those kind of expectations for it but it gives you enough power when you need it. It's fairly torquey too. Let me go ahead and put the pedal down. And it gets going. I mean, it's not shy to get moving. The steering on it is fairly lightweight too, which kind of helps when you're off-road. It's not super light, but it makes it easy to maneuver and handle this. And I like the steering wheel. The grips on here are really nice. The ride height is great. I love the visibility out of the forerunner it's got a lot of body lean that's something that you'll notice and of course that's going to be the way it is but ride comfort on road surfaces is better than what i think people give it credit for now with a body on frame type of construction like this it's going to be a little bumpier more noticeable with bumps than a typical vehicle but it's to me actually quite comfortable and smooth for the most part because it just it gives you the feeling that you can run over anything and be fine and when i drove the last trd pro we took it over some pretty nasty pretty nasty stuff hit some big bumps and things like that going off road and then when i drove it back home it it was it just felt like it hadn't been challenged at all i mean these things are built to last and they are so tough and there's so many people that can prove that now the 4Runner doesn't necessarily have a dedicated sport mode, but you could move the shift lever over to the S if you want to, to give you a little bit more peppiness. It doesn't really need that. It would be nice to have some more power under here or more efficiency, but I'll take the reliability over both of those. And this five speed holds on to its gears for a long time. And that wasn't floored right away. I floored it part way through. But going around corners is the biggest downfall of the street driving of the 4Runner. Just because of its, you know, topsy-turvy feeling. But it's not terrible. And you can hear that exhaust right now. In fact, when I talk about the road noise, the exhaust is mostly what you hear. The actual road noise isn't terrible. There's some wind noise. There's some road noise. And I'm sure these tires are probably partially to blame and the boxy design. There's no laminated glass, which is probably good if you're off-roading. If you flip over, you get in water or something, you can break the glass a lot easier right here versus a laminated glass. But day-to-day -day driving, I really like driving the 4Runner. Now, I know a lot of you, this is not the kind of vehicle that this is that you're going to want if you look for crossovers and stuff. But... If you're used to a vehicle that's practical, utilitarian, drives kind of like a truck, you're going to love this. You're going to love the ride height. It soaks up all the bumps and just goes over everything that you want it to. And this also has Toyota Safety Sense. So you've got radar cruise control. You've got a lane departure system. So if I kind of start to leave my lane a little bit, it's going to let me know. I don't want to freak out this biker up here. But... It has that, and you wouldn't really expect that for this uh, for this type of vehicle. And then let's get on it again, floored. It 
it's got plenty of get up and go as far as up in the mountains with the naturally aspirated engine when you have a naturally aspirated engine at high elevation you definitely are going to start to suffer the power and lose power compared to a turbocharged or electric type of vehicle but that's one downfall with the forerunner because i know a lot of you take your forerunners at high elevations and the efficiency is not great you can soak through your your fuel very quickly and with road noise when you get on a rough textured road it's actually not that bad compared to high interstate speeds i'll put decibel ratings down below but i was actually pretty pleased with the road noise in here the main thing that i heard was the exhaust the exhaust noise is the main culprit of the noise that gets into the cabin surprisingly now with toyota's four-wheel drive system there's a lot of controls that you can use like crawl control the multi-terrain select you've got a locking differential you've got great ground clearance good approach angles departure angles and it still feels really comfortable in off-road situations i don't have a great place that i can go that's legal where i live but i did go out of town a couple of years ago with the trd pro and i was able to make some off-road video with it so be sure to look in the description below for that where there's more details about how it drives off-road but rock crawling high speed cruising it's just fun and it does well in all scenarios and all you can hear right now is my backpack kind of clicking but there's like no rattles in this particular forerunner i was at an event where i saw some people taking it off road and they have they abuse this thing and it is still solid as a rock i mean it just when you're driving it day to day normal driving it still feels super solid so that just is a testament at how durable these forerunners are but overall i really like the forerunner it's definitely not for everyone in terms of its driving dynamics you'll have to be the one to drive it yourself and see if it's your kind of vehicle but let's go ahead and wrap things up so to wrap things up on this Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, it still has that classic, old school, rugged, dependable feel. And if you want the ultimate long lasting SUV, this is probably the one that you should go for. Toyota's made just enough updates like the LED headlights, the screen inside. This still has Toyota Safety Sense, so it has some modern technology, but it's still got the proven and reliable four liter engine, the body on frame construction, and just the ruggedness you love. The 2022 model has made a few little changes too, like the new paint as well. Of course, for TRD Pro, got to keep the tradition going. But if, if you're like me, I'm really excited to see the new redesign when it finally comes out in a couple of years or maybe next year. But I still like what Toyota offers with this 2021 TRD Pro for what it is. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be super helpful. I truly appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and have a great day.